Yes, very good morning. I hope I am audible, visible. Please confirm once over the chat box so that we will take it forward. You can message me in the chat box. All right, cool. Thank you. So welcome to our uh, online session with respect to CMA final financial reporting, corporate reporting uh, paper. So next 30 days to max uh, 35 days, what we're going to do is daily we'll have uh, three hours of session every day and uh, you know, understand what all concepts are to be made clear and what is important from your examination perspective, what should be solved in the classroom and all. So that's what we have in our mind as an agenda. So to start with, we'll first look at the syllabus so that we'll have a control over what all topics we, we would be completing uh, at each point of time. Yeah. So I hope the screen is visible to you. Excel sheet is visible to you. So technically speaking, there are, we have audio issues. Uh, yeah, my speaker, my, my mic and all are perfectly fine, I think. Need to check from your end once. Yes. So, technically speaking, there are uh, four important aspects which we need to cover from problematic problematic perspective. Number one, business combinations, which is basically what we used to call as amalgamation under AS14 earlier. Second is consolidation. And then you have uh, financial instruments, financial instruments, where you need to look at the valuation of each of those financial instruments. And then you have valuation of shares and goodwill. Okay. So this is another valuation which we need to be cautious about. And lastly, one more important uh, topic for what you have in uh, CMA fine is uh, share based payments. Okay. So these are what we will be majorly concentrating on doesn't mean that others we are not going to deal. We're going to cover it, cover the entire uh, topics, no doubt about that. But thrust would be on major of these topics because this is where the questions are uh, given the utmost weightage. Hence, we're going to coin, we're going to consider all these uh, mostly and then take it forward. So this is what uh, I would like to tell you uh, initially to get an introduction of what we have. And second thing, we do have all A's and Indies in CA final, uh, you know, CMA, CMA final paper. But the fact is in CMA, the depth at which it, it is being asked, the questions are being coined under CMA is not that great. So the quality wise, we would not be covering too much, but still I would make an attempt to give you a clarification as to what AS has got and what India's has got. And along with that, every place where there is a necessity to do a problem or two, I would definitely take you through that so that uh, it, it's clear for you from uh, AS perspective and also India's perspective. Okay, so this is what we have. And lastly, uh, there are a couple of theory parts which we need to look into. One is government accounting in India and second is reporting through XBRL. So these two are technically theory parts. Okay. Of course, government accounting at least has got little accounting in it, but XBRL is a typical theory part, which uh, we will just go through in a class, but you should take the responsibility of uh, preparing through the theory parts. Okay. So this is broadly what we have as a coverage out of all this. 
we will start with something which is little easier for you and little known to you during your uh, you know beat bcom or if you are someone who is also into ca and uh, in such case ca intermediate there is a topic which is known to everyone so let us start with that so that it will be easy for you all the first one will start with uh, shared based payments today and then take it forward to other topics okay so what do we mean by share based payments what do we mean by share based payments before we go into the subject uh, let me give you a clarification uh, you are kept on mute for now but if you have any questions you are free to ask me please unmute yourself do not hesitate to ask any questions while i continue to discuss if there is something you please throw up the question up front you need not wait for me to complete or uh, you know wait for the session to complete you can straight away ask during the recording session so that it helps others also whoever are going to take up the recorded sessions as well okay so do not hesitate i have kept you on mute for now but whenever there is a question you can unmute yourself and ask later you can mute yourself there is no issue in that at all yeah so let us get into shared based payments we are talking about indes 102 indes 102 now before we get inside the standard let me give you a background as to what a uh, standard is what it is not and all if you look at as under accounting standard erstwhile standards what are applicable for non listed companies and not largely sized entities there is no separate standard for share based payments however we only had a guidance note we only had a guidance note long back in uh, as but under indes but under indes a separate standard has been brought in standard has been brought in and it is numbered 102 now what's the big issue between a guidance note and a standard now when we call it as a guidance note when i call it a guidance note if it is a guidance note the most important thing is applicability is not mandatory applicability is not mandatory however for a standard if at all you are making any share based payments applicability is mandatory that's the reason why there is a difference between a guidance note and a standard that means under as though we have some guidance as to how accounting should be done for a share based payments it's not mandatory for all the companies to adopt as it is however when it comes to indes it is not a guidance note it's a pure standard and in such case it is mandatory for us to adopt uh, 102 if at all there is any share based payments definitely 102 has to be adopted so that's the difference between a guidance note and a standard first this is very important for us why am i telling you all this reason is under as regime that means under i gap i gap we call it uh, as we call it as i gap indian uh, generally accepted accounting policies in as we call it as in as only okay so under i gap 
it is not mandatory to have accounting for shared based payments as per guidance note only recommendatory uh, you know set of accounting procedures are mentioned in the guidance note for uh, share based payments whether you adopt or not is your wish but under indies it's not that way indies it's a pure standard which is supposed to be adopted as it is which is supposed to be adopted as it is that is what we are going to look in now okay now coming to a share based payment coming to a share based payment under indies 102 what does this standard cover what does this standard cover the standard covers technically only two aspects number one if at all any payments are made to employees if at all any payments are made to employees second payments are made to others to others for goods and services for goods and services in either of these two circumstances we use this standard call 102 now what payments are supposed to be made if it is a payment being made to either employees or others for goods or services and the payment is being made in the form of equity shares or or equity share dependent programs dependent programs in such case i would issue something called as i would uh, use this standard called as 102 yep so what is important for us is number 1 it should be a payment made either to employee otherwise it should be payment made to others specifically with respect to goods or services in either of these cases if these be payments are being made not in cash not in some other kind but in equity shares in equity shares or it is dependent on equity share a payment which is dependent on equity share of the same company in such case i use this standard call 102 so these can be further split into these payments to employees or others can be further split into three variants three variants the first one is called as equity settled plans okay second is called as cash settled plan this is also called as sars the third equity with cash alternative equity with cash alternative so these are the three things what we need to look into now if you carefully observe this part is this equity shares it is nothing but equity settled plan when it comes to equity shares dependent programs the other two fall in here the other two fall in here that means i may pay in cash however however that payment in cash is dependent on equity shares second equity settled plans or else cash alternative that means either of these first two categories i choose in such case you go with the third alternative okay so these are the ways in which it generally happens with respect to a share based program okay share based plan now having said this what is covered inside the standard what is covered inside the standard scope number 
technically speaking, the problems what we are going to solve would be predominantly ESOPs. That is what we call as employee share based programs. Okay, employee stock options or employees share based programs. Otherwise, we would also look into SARS, stock appreciation rates, otherwise cash alternatives. Okay, so these are the two things what we technically look into. However, there are things which do not get covered inside the one or, one or two. So scope exclusions are separately given. Scope exclusions, number one, in case of business combinations, that means amalgamation under AS14, under India's it's 103. In case of business combinations, if shares are being issued as purchase consideration, in such case, that does not form part of the standard. That means even in case of a business combination, shares are only being given as a consideration. However, with respect to shares which are issued only in case of business combination cannot be brought into the ambit of 102. There is a separate standard called 103 which deals with it. That will take care of it. That does not come, come into the standard at all. Second, with respect to financial instruments, financial instruments which is dealt by 109, standard 109, those finance instruments also will not be considered under share based payment. Why is this specifically excluded? You will understand later when we cover these standards separately. But for now, as I told you, for business combination, there is a separate standard which deals with it 103. Financial instruments, that means when a liability gets converted into equity or to an existing uh, preference shareholder, if I issue equity shares. Like that, there could be multiple alternatives in which equity shares may be issued. In such case, should I follow 102 or 109 is the question. Standard specifically states, if at all it is being dealt by some other standard, don't bring it into 102. Let it be dealt by that standard only, I will not bother at all. Okay. Hence, such standards which have got a specific instruction will not get into the ambit of 102 at all. Okay. So broadly, this is the scope exclusion what you have. Now, let us get into the first part, the first part, equity settled plans. As I told you, there are three parts. One is equity settled plan. Second is cash alternatives. Third is equity with the cash alternative. Okay. So we'll first deal with the equity settled plans. Then we will get into cash alternative and then we will go for the combined uh, category. Okay. So now in case of equity settled plan, this is something which you have learned as ESOPs earlier is something maybe either in your degree or uh, you know, whatever course you have undergone earlier. There's something called employee stock options, which is nothing but your equity settled plan. Now, ESOP accounting is what we are talking about here in uh, equity settled plans. Before we get into that, there are a set of uh, words which we need to understand. Those words will first, uh, you know, understand and then take it forward for the problems. Okay. Number one. Number one. Agreement date. Agreement date. Number two. Resting period. Number three. Exercise period. Number four. Market rate per share. Number five. 
नंबर फाइव एक्सरसाइज प्राइस पर शेयर ओके सो दीज आर द वर्ड्स व्हाट वी नीड टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड देन वी कैन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड नाउ व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय एन एग्रीमेंट डेट द डेट ऑन विच एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉयी enter into an agreement what agreement will they enter into look you work with me for x number of years you work with me for 2 years after you work with me for 2 years at the end of second year i will allow you to buy 1000 equity shares in my company okay i will allow you to buy 1000 equity shares in my company the price at which you will buy is very less very less compared to market rate say for example market rate at the end of 2 years i am expecting it to be 150 rupees per share my face value per share is 10 rupees i will allow you to buy for 75 rupees in such case the difference between these two is basically your uh, you know benefit for the employee yes or no so 75 rupees is the benefit for the employee which i am willing to bear which i am willing to bear now first of all why should an employer Give such alternatives to employees. Think logically. Number one, the company could be a startup company. I'm I'm taking you through practical aspects of this. Why why ESOPs are generally issued? Number one, the company could be a startup company where cash is not readily readily available, and uh, the employee whom he is taking is from a very good company. He is being paid say twenty five lakhs of salary earlier. now i have asked him to come to me and work with me for 15 lakhs only now that means somewhere he is earlier drawing 25 lakhs now it has fallen to 15 lakhs that means there is a fall of 10 lakh rupees in his salary every year will he be willing to work at that rate actually not because for him it's a loss yes or no if he goes with the same experience to some other company he gets 30% extra hike but now he is excluding that and work has agreed to work with for only 15 lakhs Now that means there is a loss of ten uh, lakhs at the first first case. Second, there is no increment at all. He is under he is being underpaid. Now what company says is, look, I am giving you only fifteen lakhs as for as your remuneration, but over and above that, in two years time, I will allow you to buy these number of shares at a discounted rate. You hold them with you. You hold them with you. The premium what I pay. that is premium whatever i am willing to give out on that particular shares will give you more money in future reason is simple reason is simple if you look at here i agreed to take him on say first of april 2021 i agreed to pay him 15 lakh salary Two years is the, you know, vesting period. At the end of two years, that means thirty-first of March two thousand twenty-three, he will be allowed to buy thousand shares in my company. Okay, thousand shares he is allowed to buy. Say each share he is going to buy only for fifty rupees. Okay, so the amount what he invests is going to be only fifty thousand rupees. Right. face value per share is 10 rupees say now the market price per share is uh, say 500 rupees per share okay 500 rupees or 5000 rupees per share market rate now when the market price is 5000 rupees he is allowed to buy it only for 50 rupees what does that mean the remaining 4950 rupees is something which the company is going to bear right this 4950 for 1000 shares if you see it becomes 4950000 over 2 years i am giving you an additional remuneration of 4950000 okay now what benefit does the employee get out of this at the end of 2 years he gets something which is worth 50 lakhs for 50000 rupees which he can sell it off in the open market and make that money Make that money. 
this is the alternative what startups give up okay because the company does not have money in its hand to pay its employee that is one alternative second scenario where practically this is being used if you see this is being used if you see in an established company also established companies also this would be used how would that be used in established companies say take tatas okay take tata tata has got very long standing in the industry no doubt about that now these such companies would like to understand what excites the employees to stay with them forever see money everybody every company pays what excites a person to continue for a longer period in a same organization is not the money it's the recognition and it's the ownership which gives them the kick okay so for the kick of ownership what established companies do is they they announce esops even in this it's the same case once an employee is given equity shares he gets that feeling of ownership are this company is my own company and once that feeling of my ownness comes in kicks in here there is no point of uh, working for salary there they start working for the company as theirs they start feeling that it's their own company and they put in their every effort uh, required for that entity okay so in such case you call it as uh, you also issue esops predominantly these are the two factors why companies generally issue esops so having said this having said this so out of all these first thing what we have discussed about is agreement date the date on which employee and employer enter into an agreement in that agreement what happens is employer gives an option for the employee to buy please note this is an option this is an option that means employee has a right to buy equity shares at the end of x number of years if he would like to exercise that right he gets otherwise he does not that means employer does not have a compulsion to issue equity shares mandatorily to employees it's only the employee who should decide whether he would like to get those shares or not if he wants he will accept the right he will uh, you know exercise the right at the end of 2 years otherwise he'll reject at the end of 2 years but for anything to happen at the end of 2 years i should first enter into an agreement now okay i should first enter into an agreement now that agreement is what i call as agreement date okay second vesting period the period between agreement date and vesting period the period between agreement date and vesting period is what i call as vesting period what is this vesting period this is a period during which vesting conditions should be satisfied vesting period is the period during which vesting conditions should be satisfied now what are vesting conditions that's our next point of discussion vesting conditions can be broadly classified into two categories okay the first is what we call as service conditions second is called as performance conditions now what is a service condition a service condition is a condition where i specify about the rendering of services for x number of years then i call it as service condition for example company told me that they'll give me 1000 equity shares if i work with them for one year 
they did not tell me within one year what should i be doing no such explanations it, they just told me that they'll give me 1000 shares for face value for 10 rupees itself even though the market price is 1000 rupees 2000 rupees 5000 rupees 10000 i don't bother i'll be allowed to buy for 10 rupees only in such case i call it a service condition that means it's a very plain vanilla cake where there are no ifs and buts okay in such case you call it a service condition next performance performance conditions what is a performance condition performance conditions can be again further divided into two categories number 1 non market based conditions second is market based conditions what is a non market condition what is a market condition let's take it practically this is how uh, realistically it applies in industry as well what do you mean by a non market condition non market condition is a condition where it is non depend it is not dependent on the market to define whether an employee is supposed to be given equity shares or not example example a company approached me and they have asked to work as cfo chief finance officer uh, srinath did you raise hand srinath sundararajan any doubts please sir service conditions explain sir yeah i'll explain wasn't uh, srinath you i see your hand to be raised no no uh, uh, no, no there is no doubts all right all right yeah thanks yeah. Yeah, service service conditions wasn't. I'll come back. Just for now, we'll finish off these parts and then we'll get back. Now, a company approached and uh, asked for a CFO role. What they have stated is they agreed to pay twenty lakhs as a package initially, but since that is not sufficient, what we have asked for is. We have asked for ESOPs, but the condition what the employer has put is, look, I am willing to give you ESOPs, but there are set of things what I want you to establish in my company. Number one, you should define standard operating procedures for my company. Number two, you should define controls. you should document the controls that means internal financial controls ifcs number 3 you should set the process flow okay on completion of these three i will allow you to get 1000 equity shares in my company i will allow you to get 1000 equity shares in my company this is what my concern is okay and we agreed now this is basically a performance condition that means whether i get this done in one year or two months or three years five years doesn't bother doesn't matter at all once you complete establishing all these three you are allowed to take 1000 equity shares in the company in such case i call it a performance obligation which is a non market based condition okay it's a non market based obligation second coming to market based obligation what does a market based condition mean market based indicates the performance obligation is linked with the market what what kind of uh, conditions could be there in such case i'll give you one example number 1 say for example i am a car seller or car manufacturer some xyz company i am a car manufacturer and right now out of the total industry for cars for uh, you know car segment out of 100% 
my cars which are being sold is 40% which are being sold is 40% now <clears throat> i have taken a chief marketing officer cmo and told him look right now we have 40% stake in the market out of 100% 40% of the cars which are being used in the used by public is our cars only the moment you bring this market share to 60% the moment you bring this market share to 60% i will allow you to take 2000 shares each share which is costing 5000 rupees i'll allow you to take for 10 rupees only face value that means you just invest 20000 at the end of two years or one year or whatever year the moment you satisfy this condition of 60 percent the target being met i will allow you to take it okay i will allow you to take the 2000 shares in my company each for 10 rupees by investing just 20000 rupees i'll allow you to take full in such case i call it a market based condition one more example right now my market share price okay market price current market price of uh, my share my company's share is 100 rupees okay i have taken a strategist chief strategy officer for my company his very business is to bring in investments into the company the strategist's work is to increase the valuation Ensure that uh, you know new investors, new PE funds, and all come into the company. Now, for this to happen, the company told him, "Look, you bring up the market price per share from 100 rupees to 150 rupees per share. You bring up the price of each share from 100 rupees to 150 rupees per share. I will give you thousand equity shares in the company." for no cost say for face value only into 10 rupees okay in such case also in such case also it's basically a employee stock option now what i am trying to convey is these options these options could be in multiple ways one is service condition second is performance condition in performance condition what we have seen is two more models one is non market based condition Second is market-based condition. Okay. Now, let's revise once again the service condition because wasn't asked. Now, what does a service condition mean? Service condition is a very simple, straightforward case where I would ask my employee to work for X number of years. At the end of X number of years, whether he really works in the company or comes to the office and sleeps also, I don't bother. On completion of two years, I'll have to allow him to buy X number of shares. In such case, I call it a service condition. Okay. Wasn't is it clear? Yes, sir. Cool. So these are the conditions what we have. Now, what is the purpose of these conditions? What is the purpose of learning about these conditions? We will understand that little later. Okay. Now, let's talk from the examination perspective. Your examination perspective conditions could be directly a service condition or a non-market condition or a market condition or a combination of either of these three. That means it could be a service condition with the non-market condition, performance obligation, a service condition with the performance obligation, which is linked to market. Either of these combinations can be possible. Okay. Now, this is with respect to the possibility of various, uh, you know, conditions. Now, having said this, why do we need these vesting conditions? Reason is, think logically, if it is a service condition, employer is defining the number of years well in advance. He is specifically stating you work for two years, three years, four years and all. In which case, my vesting period is specified there. My vesting period is specified. But, but when it comes to performance conditions, performance-based obligations, 
not every time the you know uh, vesting period is known what is vesting period the period during which he should satisfy the vesting conditions okay the vesting period is not specifically known because in case of non market conditions in case of non market conditions you can at least tell that see for one person called cfo for him to establish sops in the company for him to establish controls for him to draw the process flows he will take minimum 2 years pa i can tell that he will take 2 years so here also you are estimating that it will take 2 years but when it comes to a market condition it's very difficult why is it difficult because i do not know how many years or months it will take for the market to definitely reach x number of uh, rate so if you look at the market conditions examples which we took from 40% to 60% i should uh, increase my market share when will i achieve it i don't know when will i achieve i don't know and uh, market price from 100 rupees to 150 rupees it should hike up when will it reach 150 i don't know but when it is when it is estimated when it is uh, achieved i have to give x number of shares to those employees so what i am trying to convey is in case of service condition in case of service condition mostly it is the vesting period is known mostly the vesting period is known but when it comes to performance obligations it is not known that is why vesting period vesting period with respect to performance obligation we only go with estimates but not actuals we only go with estimates but not actuals however however if it happens to be a non market condition if it happens to be a non market condition it is more or less known it is more or less known hence we call it as actual only actual vesting actual vesting period only will be considered so what i am trying to con conclude here is in case it is service conditions which are in the vesting period the vesting period which is supposed to be considered is actual in case if it is non market performance obligations non market performance obligations even in that case the vesting periods would vesting period would be predominantly actual only if he specifically tells you it is not known then you go with estimate then you go with estimate but in case of market conditions definitely it is always estimated only there is no concept of actual at all under market conditions is it clear till here everybody please confirm once can we go forward hello yes sir yeah others no responses Yes, All right, cool. So this is with respect to the performance obligations and uh, the vesting conditions. Now, let us go to the next part. exercise period exercise period what does an exercise period mean the period during which employee would either accept the offer made or reject the offer made okay so that means during exercise period there are there is possibility for two things to happen number 1 employee accepts or employee rejects 
Okay. Now, employee accepting the offer is what we call as exercising the offer or option. Exercising the option. Okay. Rejection is what we call as lapsing the option. L-A-P-S-E. Lapsing the option. Okay. So, it is either exercise or lapse by the employee. If employee exercises, accounting would be different. If employee rejects, that means if the employee lapses the offer, in such, in such case, the accounting would be different. So in these cases, what should be done is something which we are supposed to see. So technically, we have covered all the important aspects here. Okay. All the important aspects. Having said this, now we will get into How accounting would be done? How accounting would be done? Okay. So accounting wise, if you see, number one, on agreement date, that is also called as grant date. That's also called as grant date. On agreement date, there would not be any entry. Why no entry? Because it's purely an agreement which was entered into. There is no monetary transaction which has happened on the date. Hence, on agreement date, there would not be any entry at all. Only if monetarily something happens, there would be a uh, entry which comes into the books of accounts. Otherwise, no entry at all. Okay. Next, number two. During Vesting period. During vesting period. During vesting period, you should satisfy your market conditions or non-market conditions or service conditions. Okay. That means during vesting period, you have either of these three categories. One is service conditions. Second is non-market conditions. Third is market conditions. Okay. So if it happens to be a service condition, if it happens to be a service condition or if it happens to be a non-market condition, in either of these cases, we go with actual vesting period. But if it is a non-market condition, sorry, if it is a market condition, we go with estimated vesting period. Okay. So, Depending on problem to problem, we will define what is supposed to be done. Depending on problem to problem. So in that, A, the first thing what you're supposed to do is you should record the option expense. Now, recording option expense, if you see, for option expense, entry would be this expense what I'm incurring is on an employee. Okay. Though I call it a share-based payment, it is specifically being incurred on an employee. Hence, employee expense is supposed to be debited. Okay. So, employee benefit expense account debit to share-based payment reserve account. Now, what is this account? Share-based payment reserve is basically a profit which is set aside. It is a profit which is set aside. Now, if you carefully observe, share-based payment reserve account is what we are using here. Unlike AS, here what we are using is a reserve. And in AS, if you go back and see in your uh, you know degree or somewhere, we would have learned it called as ESOP liability account. 
ease of liability account but under indias we are using this something called as shared based payment reserve account why are we using reserve account under indias why not a liability account anyways we know that it's a liability only no in which case why are we not using a liability that that's a question which could arise i'll give you a clarity here if you look at esops until and unless employee specifically tells that he is exercising shares there is no liability from employer's point of view till that time i am parking some money out of my actual profits for a specific purpose called this uh, esops till the employee till the time employee exercises the option there is no liability on my side at all if the employee exits the company midway say 2 years is the service condition i park the side for the first year some amount okay second year also i am i am about to park some money for the second year also but in the second year the employee left the organization and went now the monies which are set aside in the first year are idle that's not actually a liability i cannot tell that liability got cancelled i can only tell that monies of out of profits which are set aside are not consumed for that purpose for that reasons what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to consider it only as a sbp reserve rather than a liability under indias okay i hope it is clear guys second entry what is supposed to be passed second entry to be passed is once expenses incurred we transfer it to pnl so transfer to pnl pnl account debit to your uh, employee benefit expenses so this is what happens during the all vesting periods if it is only one year you do this for one year if it is for two years you do it for two years now while you do it like that for multiple years how do i calculate it is the question how do i calculate month on month or year on year uh, you know employee benefit expense is the question we'll discuss about that little later once this is done the third part is during vesting period during exercise period sorry during exercise periods you have number 1 if the option is exercised okay if the option is exercised what accounting would be there if the option is lapsed what accounting should be done okay first let us talk about exercised in that number 1 first thing if there is any money being collected by you if there is any money being collected by you from the employee say face value of the uh, money or you know discounted price whatever you are collecting from the employee that you can collect okay so for cash received for cash received what is the entry entry would be bank account debit to this money again i'll add it to that add it to that uh, sbp reserve only okay sbp reserve whatever he brings in i bring it into my sbp reserve second thing would be issue equity shares issue equity shares how do i issue out of this sbp reserve okay so entry would be sbp reserve account debit to equity share capital to securities premium say for example on that date each share's face value is 10 rupees and uh, the premium is 990 rupees that means each share is being given out for 1000 rupees in such case say one share is being given in such case 1000 rupees would be debited from sbb reserve one equity share will be uh, you know it would be outstanding now and 990 rupees is the securities premium which i have created now okay so this is what happens in case 
equity shares are issued b what if the option is lapsed what if the option is lapsed in case if the option gets lapsed in such case we will you know reverse the provisions whatever we have created from p and l we will again transfer it back to p and l or else we will transfer it to general reserve so sbp reserve account debit to p and l or general reserve whatever you would like to do you can transfer it there okay so these are the accounting entries what we have now i have told that uh, vesting period during vesting period how do we calculate that uh, amount is something which we are yet to discuss okay value of option expense to be incurred in each period of vesting say for example i am giving 1000 options to an employee okay and uh, there are five such employees to whom i am giving away okay for each option say my option expense what i have arrived at comes to 50 rupees how did i get this 50 rupees i am expecting the market price per share at the end of 2 years for 150 current market price is 100 rupees the difference between these two 50 rupees 100 rupees anyways employee will be bringing in i will allow him to buy for 100 rupees but the price of the equity share at the end of 2 years is expected to be 150 that means only the deferral 50 rupees is something which i should put out of my pocket okay so 50 rupees is what i am supposed to incur this is what i am supposed to incur into into first year out of 2 years because the vesting period is 2 years vesting period is 2 years and i am right now in the first year okay by doing this what i get by doing this what i get is option expense for year 1 till now what is the option expense okay till now what is, what would be the option expense so 1000 into 5 5000 5000 into 50 how much is it 25 250000 so 250000 is supposed to be set aside over 2 years time right now i am in the first year out of 2 years so the total option expense which should have been incurred till now is 125000 what i get okay however however out of this if you have any opening balance that is supposed to be deducted minus zero since this is the first year there would not be any option expense outstanding till now okay so it would be zero finally the, for the first year it's going to be 125000 only okay same way when you go to second year say at the end of second year out of five employees one fellow left you right now have only four okay so if you see in the second year i have 1000 options which are supposed to be given for four employees for each option 50 rupees is supposed to be given and i am in the second year out of out of second year so how much would it be 1000 into 4 4000 4000 into 50 is 2 lakhs right two lakhs is what i should create at the end of 2 years out of this 2 lakhs already at the end of first year i have i have created 125000 right so net in the second year if i charge only 75000 as an option expense it is sufficient it is sufficient this is what we do in case 
if the option has got multiple years as life. Okay. So this is the same thing which I've given in the material which I've shared with you. Now, what I'll do is I'll quickly open the material and uh, go through the entire theory so that it would be clear from your end as well. And then we can start with the problems also. So, so introduction, if you see, the standard covers accounting for shared based payments made to employees or for goods and services. That means technically others, okay? So shared based payments can be in three forms, equity settled plans, cash settled plans, and uh, equity plans with cash alternatives. So this is what we have discussed. And out of this, technically speaking, to what all the standard does not apply. If you see number one, we spoke about uh, business combinations. Number two, we spoke about uh, you know, uh, financial instruments, 109, okay? And third, transactions with uh, existing equity shareholders. That means in case any bonus shares are issued, rights shares are issued in such cases also, the standard does not apply. That's a typical accounting process which happens. So for such transactions, this standard does not apply. So what is a equity instrument? Uh, what does a option mean? What is a fair value and all it's given. Now value of an option, we have not discussed about it. I'll tell you what it is. Technically speaking, in the market, uh, if you ask me in a realistic manner, how do we do it if you ask me, uh, someone who has gone through equity research and all would understand this. There is something called option valuation models. Option valuation models. What does an option valuation model mean? What is the price of an option in case it is exercisable in two years time with a comparable company on hand and all is something what we do. Okay. So in such cases, we do it on a fair value basis. So there are uh, you know, scientifically proven methods like uh, binomial, Black-Scholes model, you know, uh, so those methods are something which we use in case of a fair valuation model that is most realistic in nature. That's most realistic in nature. I can share you a few models if you want also, which are realistic, but you know, not relevant for you from examination perspective. That's something what we do really in the, in the real life scenarios. And uh, second is intrinsic value method. Intrinsic value is basically what predominantly most of the cases examination questions would be in, wherein it tells you what is the market price per share at the end of uh, vesting period. That means during, during exercise period, what would be the market price the company expects is something which would be told in the question. And from that, if we deduct the exercise price at which uh, he is allowed to buy, the difference between these two is what we call as my you know, value of option. That is what we are trying to split over multiple years and uh, charge it off in PNL. Okay. So, grant date or agreement date is the date on which the employer and employee enters into an agreement. So, vesting period is uh, the period during which uh, you know the employee vests the conditions. And then exercise period is the day is the period during which employee will be allowed to exercise his options. Okay. So we have also discussed about uh, conditions, service conditions and the performance conditions. All right. So accounting entries on grand date, no entry during vesting period, actual vesting period, if based on service and uh, I think it's supposed to be corrected here, please correct it based on service and non-market conditions it is, okay? Based on service and non-market conditions. And second, expected vesting period if based on market conditions. Okay. So for recording option expenses, ESOP expense account debit to share based payment, then transfer to PNL, PNL account debit to ESOP expense, okay? So next. Now, 
closing balance of share based payment reserve if you see this is not actually closing balance it is basically expense of uh, you know expense against share based payments it's not closing balance please correct it also expense in each year against share based payments so please correct it if you already have the material handy expense in each year against share based payments so number of employees into number of options per employee into fair value per option that means here it could be either you know uh, your scientific methods that is based on fair value or intrinsic value into completed years divided by vesting period total vesting period okay minus opening balance if any that gives you what is the option expense for each year okay now if you do not deduct the opening balance that is basically your uh, year end closing balance what it should be okay so what we need is employee exp expense is what we need that's why this is what important for us and then on exercise of option okay for exercise price uh, on exercise price received bank account debit to share based payments reserve and for allotment share based payment account debit to equity shares and uh, to securities premium okay so if it is lapsed in such case share based payment reserve account debit to general reserve so typically this is what uh, we do in case we have you know various uh, shares okay so cancellations and modifications let us discuss little later okay so today being the first class let us stop here let's not go too deep and uh, dwell into much so i hope this is a good start uh, uh, for today okay so what we will do is we will uh, catch up tomorrow morning again at 6:15 sharp and take it forward from there okay thank you see you guys tomorrow morning 6:15